Hi everyone, uh, Mr. Marcello here from Creative Action with another interview retrospective of uh, a film that was made five years ago called The Cinematic Life of Julia Kane. The Cinematic Life of Julia Kane was made in uh, five years ago at Westridge Middle School as part of their Lights, Camera, Action class. And a lot of the kids in that class actually started in an elementary class at their elementary school and then continued to make stuff with us for years on end. And some of them are still in Youth Cinema Collective to this day. Uh, Julia Kane is a really funny movie about a girl who's a sixth grader and she's kind of figuring herself out and she has a very overactive imagination and she uh, imagines different things happening in her life as if they were genres in different movies. And then she has a crush and along the way she learns that life isn't like the movies and that you really need to be truer to yourself and figure out who you are if you want to be happy and not just rely on like what the movies and what media tells you you want to be. Uh, it features a wonderful performance by the lead actor, Sloane Reardon, along with some really cool genre stuff and a really great sequence that's in 3D. It's one of my favorite things to shoot this 3D sequence. Um, so I put the link to that below and uh, we're going to talk to the lead actress, Sloane Reardon, who played Julia Kane. Uh, and she's going to tell us all about her time in creative action. Uh, the interview mentions a lot of other movies that she was in, and we'll put those links as well. But we might actually do separate interviews about those movies at some point as well. Um, so this, but uh, in the meantime, you can watch Julia Kane at the link below, and then come back and join us for an interview with Sloane Reardon, uh, who played Julia in the film. See you soon. <laughs> Right. We are he, joining us today is Sloan Reardon, uh, who played who played Julia Kane uh, four years ago, five years ago. I think five years ago. I was pretty five sure. years ago. You were in sixth grade, and now you're in eleventh yeah. grade. Uh -huh. So with fifth anniversary uh, re retrospective of of uh, the cinematic life of Julia Kane. So talk to me a little bit about. Um, maybe how you got involved, like, as I've known you since third grade, you were in an elementary class with us. How did you get involved in our creative action program? Um, I'm pretty sure I was just a being a little third grader looking through the after school activities that I can do and I saw the lights camera action class and I signed up to do it. It sounded like a lot of fun and I think I met like twice a week, right? And I just had such a good time once, once a week. Fridays. <laughs> That Friday, oh yeah, I remember. And it was just such a good time. And then from there, I started doing creative action summer camps. I did lights, camera action. I continued it into middle school, and I did some youth cinema collective stuff in high school. So it was just like, yeah. Ah, you've been with us for a long time. Um, now you have now you have like an extensive acting theater background before you even walk through the door of creative action. I mean, if you want to talk to us a little bit about like. Um, what had been your experience in terms of uh, acting and theater at the time when you started with us? For sure. So um, I think I'd done a little bit. I've, I've done some stuff on stage before. I'd been like extras in, in TV film type stuff, but I'd never really gotten a chance. Also, I did a lot of art, but I had never really gotten a chance to like blend those things together in a way that was satisfying. I know. I, I don't know. Like um, I, knew that I was really interested in doing acting and stuff and making stories, doing storytelling, but um, being able to work with creative action gave me an opportunity to sort of blend the storytelling creative aspects and the artistic aspects with being able to have fun little performances and things like that. Like as you started growing through and you've done a few and become a veteran of the process, what were some of the things that you were taking away from it, uh, from the process? And and the learning and the acting and all that. What did you, what had you been learning at that point, do you think? Mm. Well, I feel like one of the important things is I was sort of learning how it all worked and how I could put all these aspects together and be able to visually figure out how I want my story to be told and like really bring a vision to life and do so like cooperatively with other artists and to really write the script and actually figure out how to go and shoot it and I learned a lot about film acting too. I really had no idea to do that because a lot of my experience of me doing actual stuff, I was always on stage. So it was definitely different. Can you talk so, about that difference? What is that? What is it different? Yeah. 
oh man, I, I was used to being so over the top with everything that I did. Because <laughs> um, you had to be loud, you know, so people could see you and people could hear you. Because my mom's a theater director, so that's always how she, like, taught me to do it. Um, but on film, you, you have to be so subtle. Like, if you're all going all crazy and stuff, it's not going to read as well. And it can capture the more, like, subtle emotions. I don't know. Not to put you on the spot a little bit, but there's one moment from the candidate that I might cut to here. That yeah, is, no, that where is I'm going really, absolutely crazy. Where, there was one, it was one thing. It was, there was a bit where, like, there was the new recess rule, and you couldn't go out to recess unless you had a girl. And you went, that's insane. I remember that, like that, just that read. I remember that really. That was one of my favorite things was just that read. That's insane. And we'll, we'll cut to that now. And, and That's insane. I want to talk about Julia Kane, this kind of huge sprawling movie. And when I show people, like the thing here's I think about Julia Kane. When I want to show people what that class was like and what the movies we made were like at like Valley View and Westridge, like Lights, Camera, Action, General, that's the movie I show. Like that to me is like the definitive, like value Westridge kind of movie aesthetic. Yeah. So, definitely. so tell me a little bit about like your memories of sort of coming up with the idea and thinking about like playing the role and like how, how some of that came to be. Cause it's, it's all a little bit fuzzy for me. Mm, yeah. Well, I remember I was so excited that I finally was going to be able to like be the lead in a creative action movie. You know what I mean? I was so happy. And I listened to a lot of Annette from the cello music. I figured out what Big Light was. I had no idea what that was, but I learned. <laughs> and so you prepared. I, yeah, no, I tried to. I tried to really figure it out. Um, and I remember we talked a lot about like how we were going to do the different genre stuff, where we'd like riff on the different kinds of genres and play around with that. And that was really interesting. Um, what was interesting but, about it? Um, I think it was just like, that was when I was realizing, oh, like, this is going to be super cool, because we were going to do 3D, and that was super cool, um, and, and figuring out how to sort of all combine those into the same, like, tone of the movie and make them all work in there, and tell the story cohesively, like, it was just awesome that we had the opportunity to mess around with all that stuff, you know? So, you're a sixth grader, you're like, and you're <laughs> tiny, you're one of the smallest people in the oh. class. Yeah. Most of the classes, seventh and eighth graders, because they had been there a year before, they had done film as forever. And there were some mostly mm -hmm. seventh and eighth graders. So folks, uh, some of those kids like Miles and Jack and all those guys and Timo yeah, yeah, yeah. Am, and all these guys who just were really experienced people. And in the meantime, you're there and you're this kind of like tiny energetic dynamo. <laughs> <laughs> and and you and you you hadn't really worked with this crew before. You'd had a yeah, and then there were some people from like the year above that too who were there, and like Bella Newlands and Joaquin and all those guys. But like, um, how what was it like being like the kid amongst these and sort of having this whole movie on your shoulders? Oh, um, well, it was a little it was a little stressful because it's like oh, well, I don't want to mess it up, but. Um, it was honestly really cool to have so many people who were really nice to me, who were really sweet and who I could learn from, you know, because all those kids are such sweethearts and they taught me so much. And like, it's, what are some of the things they taught you? Um, well, I feel like just being around people with experience, I understood how to do things better, you know, because filmmaking wise, I figured out how to set things up more. I figured out how cameras work. Um, and also just being around people who are, more experienced like film actors that was nice to be able to see okay like i should do this and not be all over the place um yeah because yeah, you're you're acting opposite jack who is a reluctant actor he's excellent but he hated it oh for sure yeah he he was not he, he was like this is the last performance i'm doing for you ever and i'm like <laughs> okay yeah. um and uh, he hated it, but uh, it worked out really well because he's such like a, he's such a grounded actor. And I'm curious, like, um, and you, you yeah, so what what was like a was there a ch what was the challenge for you in this film? Do you remember a moment in that movie where you were like challenged and you felt like I didn't know how to I don't know how to get this or? Yeah, I think because I was so used to going absolutely ham, I didn't really know how to be subtle with things, and I didn't. I also move my face around a lot in it and I just I really wanted it to be good I wanted so hard to make sure that I wasn't going to bring it down or anything um and 
oh, and I remember the day where I was singing the little song, I just got kind of nervous, and I just felt like there was a lot on my shoulders, right, but I tried to just have fun with it, and like, I really had to teach myself how to do lessons more, you know what I mean, to just like, take a breath, calm it down, and just, just say it, you know what I mean? One of the things I really like about the movie is that Julia has a lot of that kind of manic theater kid energy. Uh-huh. And I think that that, I think part of the reason it works is because you really feel like in your struggle to be subtle, like Julia, the character kind of does the same thing. She starts uh-huh. off really extra the whole, and then by the end, she's giving this like really, yeah. this really kind of nuanced sense of who she is. And like a, a lot of those kind of barriers that she puts up to, to sort of be to survive in the world she, she they've been torn down by the end of the movie um uh can you talk a little bit about one of the things that i love about that movie is like there is this like romance angle with with your character and jack it's uh, one way but we had that wonderful fantasy sequence where you're in the hallway and it looks like you're about to kiss and then it cuts to like that is the best laugh that I've ever gotten in a movie yeah, no. we've ever like to this day we'll show it and people will just lose it on that one it's the biggest laugh of a in a movie that we've had and so I'm curious like any memories of like that specific scene or that moment and you know you're like 12 or 11 and he's like yeah what? yeah I was it was very strange I remember being super nervous about it I mean obviously Jack was great and he didn't like make it uncomfortable or anything but at the time I was sort of I don't know because I remember friends being like you're so lucky like <laughs> but I just remember being like because <laughs> at the time I was like oh no I think I'm a lesbian <laughs> and then I was sort of dealing with that at the same time um but I don't know like it, it it really wasn't a huge deal I thought it was gonna be a lot scarier than it was and I still love watching that scene I watched it this morning I was like okay yeah I get why <laughs> I get why this gets laughed it's 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 so fun and the other thing here's the other thing that i like about it is that when we were writing it and kind of figuring it out there was a question of whether or not we would have a kiss or we'd cut away or something like that and yeah. like oh, you that. and like you and your mom made it clear under no in no uncertain terms that a kiss was not happening oh and so really? oh yeah um not in a mean way but just like like oh. it, it never really felt like it was going to happen and uh and so what's nice about that is that that, that actually made the scene better because i think the thing yeah. is better when you're like you get close close and then cut it's it's so great and i think had we had the permission had you been like oh yeah i'll kiss him whatever like if that had happened i think that that would have made the scene worse like if we had gone that far Agreed. And like yeah. yeah and so i think that was kind of a neat thing um mm-hmm. i uh, that w- i always uh the other thing i so the other thing about that movie is that is, is that ridiculous huge Annette Funicello musical number at the mm. beginning that we <laughs> that took a whole day to film and we did with the crane and with like the band and we had all the costumes and stuff uh, and like you mentioned being nervous about it earlier can you talk a little bit more about that and about yeah the- I was so nervous I because I think I thought that I was gonna sing it at first we had considered maybe me doing that so I was sort of starting to do that a little bit I, I'm pretty sure I was singing underneath it and that was just so scary because there were so many people and I actually had to be like, okay, well, here it is. Because it's, it's my first time doing like being the lead in a creative action movie that of course I, <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm all decked out in my beehive with <laughs> like a hundred kids around. But, um, so that was a little spooky just because I really didn't want to mess it up. But man, it was also really fun because we managed to have everybody be dressed up like they were in the 60s and all the music and stuff like it was just really cool it was, it was cool a story. it was a wild sequence like to shoot it was just wild i remember i was having i was having oh, so yeah. much fun. i was like <laughs> cackling with delight the whole time but that happens you remember this there was always that moment in a movie where something we're doing something ridiculous and i just start like giggling like i can't believe that we get to do this every year there'd be something yeah like, yeah no no, no. Like so the 3d cool. or the you know. um, the uh so what would i so my i guess my next question would be like what is let's say if you had to talk to your younger self or maybe a kid from creative action now who's in a similar mm-hmm. space where they're they're doing a lot of acting and maybe a movie's like on their shoulders and they feel nervous about that performance or the mm-hmm. plays on there like what would you say to a kid like that what what kind of things did you learn from that experience that you would take with you in terms and that you might give to someone else who's in a similar experience today 
Yeah. Um, I think a thing for me is I always just wanted to be good. Like I was so focused on, I got to make it good. I've got to do a good job. I have to make this, you know, and it's just like, it wasn't really about that. It was, it was, I just, I just wish that, I don't know. And I think I did figure this out eventually, but just like, don't be afraid to not be great. Like it doesn't have to be about you giving the best performance. It's just about like learning and figuring things out. And if you just sort of let it happen and have fun with it and explore and experiment, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But if you're just like experimenting and trying things out, you'll wind up with something that's fun and then you can be proud of that. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I really like about the movie is that you're able, like your character, ha you and you let yourself look stupid so oh, much yeah. in this movie. That's so important. That's so important. Yeah. <laughs> was, that hard for, was that hard for you to like be goofy and were and like, was that, was that vulnerable for you? Uh, a little bit. It was kind of, for a while, it was a little bit hard for me to watch afterwards because I'd be like, oh, I look so stupid. I'm doing a bad job. But um, watching it again today, I was able to take it a lot easier on myself and be like, oh, well, this is funny, you know? So it's all good. And I'm glad that I that I goofed it up, you know? It's funny. <laughs> like when you fall over in the chair or when, oh, you're, yeah, like, bre yeah. when you're like breathing on the window, like... <laughs> All these things. Honestly, and, it was so fun. Yeah. And what's interesting, like the other thing, the other shot that I really like is there's this close up of you from the side where you're blowing on the dandelion. Yeah, and I and can't I make it. And I remember that that was an accident. Like you're just gonna blow on this dandelion, was the and then you were just like, <laughs> <laughs> like not hitting the dandelion, and then you threw it down. I'm like, okay, that's an even better piece of business. Yeah. Like a nice yeah. little happy accident. I remember that. Like really. And well. Honestly, that's the stuff that I'm the most proud of. Like. <laughs> watching it the stuff that really makes me laugh is like oh okay this was good you know and that's the stuff where I'm looking stupid so <laughs> um what from those things I mean you talked about it in a general sense but then when you were uh later on in uh let's see in seventh grade we did changes which you directed mm -hmm. and then later you did the runaway inning which you also directed which you wrote and directed and it was just like completely oh. changes as changes was like you directed it and I was there behind you, but like Runaway Inning is like you went off and just made stuff. So I'm curious, like at, you kind of transitioned to this role as like a director more than an actor. And mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm interested in like what you took away from like Julia Kane and your, and as a performer, mm -hmm. like what you took away from your experience performing that like informed your directing. Yeah, I think Julia Kane definitely was one of the things that sort of swayed me more towards the directing side of things because I just sort of felt like I, a lot of times I knew what I wanted to see, but I couldn't necessarily make it happen on my own. Like, oh, it would be so, it would be so good if I could just say it exactly like this and have all of this stuff happen. But um, I just, I, I, I don't know. And, and experimenting with that and trying so hard to be subtle and get it just right. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I was sort of trying to direct myself and I was like, you know what, it would be fun if I could just tell someone else to do this. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> um, that's yeah. interesting because there's there are a lot of actors like that who are like I've seen you know I was at we were at Austin Film Festival with YCC at one point and like there were these two there was the Jerry from Parks and Rec was on a panel and and also um, the guy who plays Sean from Psych James Rode was there and mm -hmm. like and, and Jim O'Hare who plays Jerry was just like you couldn't ask for a more like actory guy he's like I really like the collaboration and the exploration and like <laughs> You know, you really have to guide the actor gently. And Rody was like, just tell me how you want me to do it. Just tell me <laughs> what it is. Like, just tell me what you want and I'll do it. Do you want it fast? Do you want it slow? Just give me the line read. I don't care. Like, I don't want to explore. I just want to do it. I want to be like the, your remote, remote control me. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Um, Both, if you want to answer that as an actor and a director, that's fine. Yeah, okay. So as an actor, I definitely like when people take it easy on me. <laughs> but I do like it when they're clear with what they want you know like we can have the discussion about the energy of what I'm going for all that stuff but I still I, at the end of the day I still want to know like change this do it this way you know um and I think as a director I'm kind of similar to that I try and make sure that like um we're in a mindset where we're collaborating and people are able to be like hey let's let's do this and then we can experiment with it but at the same time I'm always like hey can you try it where you're thinking about it this way or like so instead of being like do this exactly i kind of i don't know i think about 
how they can change their mindset to get it to what a I lot want. of it's also the <laughs> actor like when you have like you have to yeah. kind of what works for you would not have worked for like Drew Colley, who was in um, mm. Changes or something like that. But, um, or, or Jack or whatever for that matter, or, or Agatha, who's an, who's mm. an astonishingly good actor uh, yeah. when she wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, s- speaking of some of those other people, uh, if you could talk a little bit about like LCA and the creative action program in terms of like the friendships that you've made and the bonds that you've had with some of these people over the years and how they've mm-hmm. sort of grown over time um, and, or, or, or how they've sort of pushed you forward, especially going through high school. Like what has being a part of the group and working with the group meant to you? Yeah. Um, well, I think when some of my friends joined it, we were already friends at the time, like Drew and Agatha and Paulina and I, we were all sort of in it together, but like, I am still really close with Agatha to this day, and with Drew, I feel like I'm always going to sort of have that bond with her, where like, we made this art together, we made these stories, we told these stories, and like, even though I don't really see her as much as I used to, like, I always love her, and I feel like a big part of how I am able to still have all these like amazing memories of making stuff with her was because of Let's Get Rack and Creative Act, you know? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, not to talk about all these other people, but something I see sometimes with some of my other LCA kids that are friends with each other, they weren't friends when they were in LCA together, or maybe oh. they, were, they were from different years, and now they hang out together because of LCA, because LCA, like, in, like Michaela Hansen and Drew hang out together Mm -hmm. and they didn't really do a lot they didn't really do a lot together but like they because of lca they're like um can you talk a little bit like a little bit more about like that collaborative aspect of the of the work and like Mm -hmm. what it's like to create with other people and like what you have to give and take some maybe if you want to do that in terms of advice or something or how do you feel about like that part of the filmmaking process Oh, I think it's so fun. I love writing scripts in a group because you can just bounce things off of each other. And then if somebody has a great idea, it's like, oh, oh, we have to put this in and then we can have it in there and then we can tweak it and just make it like so that everyone gets a little piece of their vision in there. But then we can all mold it to something that makes more sense and is more cohesive. So it's just so much fun. And like teamwork is great. I know this sounds cheesy, but just like not being afraid of it makes for really cool products you know um i'm about to wrap up here but a couple of the final little questions um so in your last lca thing was an eighth grade movie we did called walk away which was our last movie at westridge and we wrote it it was a group of six of us and we wrote it together it was one of the coolest writing jobs that we i think as a script it like really came together nicely but it's an interesting exercise to watch Julia Kane with Sloan in sixth grade and then walk away with Sloan in eighth grade mm-hmm. and like see the difference not only in the subtlety and the performance but just like in how you carry yourself and how oh yeah yeah so what can you talk a little bit about that and like how you might have, like some things that you might notice think about that Mm-mm. well physically I think the first thing that you'll notice is that I look very drastically different <laughs> you know oh, what I mean you lost like, your video I... just now oh no, no. Okay. we're back right back okay we're back but right. yeah, I mean, my hair is longer and it's blue and then I cut it in the end. <laughs> so it's it's two very different looks from the one that I had in sixth grade. But um, I think also, I feel like when I was in eighth grade, my, my, I don't know, it's, it's a very much, I feel like I'm reflecting myself on the inside a lot more on the outside. You can see that I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I, I I look very out there in it, but I think at the same time, it's kind of the opposite way of how I'm sort of acting it. I actually want to talk about the haircutting because that's, I think, one of my favorite moments of any LCA movie. You should mm, know, really? you, you should, yeah, because you should know the histories that there was another movie that we did at Del Valley called Breathe, which mm-hmm. there, there will be an episode about with Maria de Jesus, who's the actor in Breathe. And um, in Breathe, originally we were hoping we could do the hair, a haircutting as a moment of physical transformation. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, the idea of um, the idea, like the and and she was not going to do it. She was just mm-hmm. not. She was the, the same age you were in Walk Away, but she's like, I'm saving this hair for my quinceañera, and I'm gonna. It's like a tradition, family tradition. I'm gonna cut it off and give the ponytail to my mother. It was. It's a whole thing. So yeah. it just. It, but it would have been really powerful because she had like hair to her knees, and it would have been really powerful to be like at the end of this like 
personal crisis that she does like a chop and like walks through the halls with this chop. And I remember what happened was that you had mentioned in the fall during runaway and you had mentioned, I'm going to cut all this hair off. I'm sick of it. Yeah. And so I reached out to your mom over winter break and I said, Hey, listen, whatever the movie is, can we like hold off on cutting her hair until we shoot the movie and do it as part of the movie? And your mom was yeah, yeah, let's do it. And we were like, we'll pay for the salon or whatever. And you were like, yeah, let's do it. And so we kind of wrote everything leading up to this haircutting moment that we were going to do on camera. And we did it at your house. And maybe you can talk a little bit about like that day. Mm. Oh, well, okay. First of all, it was so much fun to cut my hair on camera. And I don't know, it was a really cool thing in the movie because sort of the same process that was happening in that movie was happening in my life with the like it symbolized all the same stuff you know what I mean because I totally felt like I hid behind it and not because in a way where I was like scared to speak out and stand up against stuff but I definitely did feel like it was so extravagant that like people would pay attention to it but not pay attention to to me you know so cutting it was something that I very much needed to do and it was just so fun and it's so fun that like that moment is always gonna be there and man i'm just so glad that we did it because it, it was super cool. cool it looks super <laughs> cool and it's shocking like i've like when i've when that, that movie has shown like audiences just like wait is that an, is that a wig is that an, like they cannot believe that no i'm like no she cut her hair on camera and we planned it ahead in advance and all this stuff <laughs> um, I mean, my regret and, uh, you know, we had to compromise, obviously, but my regret, re regret was that you didn't show up with like a buzz cut the next day. Yeah. Honestly, if we had done it today, I probably would have shaved my head for it. Yeah. But like in eighth grade, that's not an ask yeah. that you can uh, make, no. like, but it still worked beautifully. It, it worked beautifully. And I think the journey of your, of you as an actor and a creative person through those, through those movies is really, really uh, interesting. Um, so my, I guess my last question is sort of what are like your, what have been like your big create takeaways from your time in creative action and your time working with us and doing this stuff? Like what are the things that you're going to carry with you as you, you're, you're a junior, you're, you're finishing up your junior year now. Um, you got your last year of high school coming up. Like what are the things that are, you're going to carry with you in that process? Yeah. Um, creative action has just been so special to me and it's been such an important part of like me growing up and my childhood and like, figuring out the kind of art that I want to make and things like that. So I feel like I've really fine-tuned how to figure out, I mean, obviously not all the way, but I figured out a lot more how to tell a story, how to execute a vision, how to combine all the aspects of art that I like to explore. And I think also just the things that I learned how to do, like I'll, I'll remember all the memories that we made and all the friends that I've made, but I'll also remember like, <laughs> how to set up a tripod and stuff like that that I wouldn't have known and how to make a story from scratch and like put it together with a big group of people and make something that is super cool so I mean the, the, the last thing I would talk about is like the other thing that's really been you you've talked about this a little bit in, is that like all these movies like are really about like you know these values of standing up for people and like speaking and figure out who you are like can you talk a little bit about like your You've always been a, a, a very activist kind of person. You've always been really uh, passionate about various issues in your community. Um, mm -hmm. How has making this art helped you be more effective in being a, a voice in your community? Mm, yeah, I think, well, f firstly, it helped me figure out who I was a lot and how I can use my voice to talk about stuff. But it, it just gave, it gave me a great opportunity to be able to tell stories that have purpose you know what I mean like um I don't know I I think whenever I have something that's like wow people really need to be talking about this I have an outlet on how I can get that out there and make art with it that can help affect other people and I'm just so grateful that creative action has given me the opportunity to figure out that that's a thing that I can do you know what are you doing these days like what's what's your art stuff that you do these days Mm, well, I'm in a film class right now, and my friend Sonoma and I are gonna start, we, okay, we were gonna start working on this little, like, experimental horror film that's half animation, half live action. It was gonna be super cool. I was gonna have my rats in it. I don't know if that's still gonna be able to happen because of the quarantine, but we're working on it, so. And if, do you know, do you, is that something you feel like you're gonna pursue after high school? 
Um, I'm not totally sure, but I think for sure I'm going to make sure that art is in there somewhere. You know what I mean? And I'm going to definitely take the storytelling stuff that I've learned and the social stuff that I've learned. But I mean, hopefully, I hope I can have at least a little bit of film stuff in my life still. Uh, and my last question is like, what would you say to any, like, would, like we're going to probably have a, a lot of young, younger, like creative action kiddos talk, uh, watching this movie, watching this video and here, and like, you know, you're on the other side of it uh, yeah. and, and you're on the other side of it and you have all these memories. Like, what would you say to those kids that are in creative action now who are doing our art now? Like what, any sort of advice or message you want to give to our younger folks, yeah. uh, the next generation? Um, I'm really proud of you guys because you're in the super cool program and you're having fun and you're making stuff and just I, I just really hope that you're enjoying your experience and you're making things that you're proud of and things that are important to you and like good on you because the world needs more art about stuff that matters to people. So. Well, thank you so much, Sloan. I really appreciate uh, talking to you. It's been a lot of fun. I love your new hairdo. It's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> uh, and uh, I hope I get to see you sooner rather than later. I hope so too. All right. Okay. Bye. Take Thank care. you bye so bye. much for having me. Oh.